Hi guys, welcome back. This is Carolyn. In today's video, I'll be showing you how to paint 8 different types of trees and I'll walk you through step by step my way of painting them using the wet on wet technique. So let's jump right into it. For the first tree, we'll be painting a basic tree and I will have the reference link down in the description below. And then what I usually do is that I'll grab a scrap paper and then try to analyze the basic tree, the basic forms of the tree. And then if we look at the reference photo, this tree here, it has different portions in the branches. So we can see here that we have the trunks coming out on the left side. And then we have a few bigger branches here. And then this is the main tree trunk. And then here we have one portion here. And another portion here. And we see the third one and the fourth coming down. And we have the fifth on top and coming down here. So what I usually do is separate them into a few portions to differentiate the different bunch. And then as we paint, we will try to connect them together. So it will look like one whole tree, but at the same time, it has different portions in the tree. And then from here next, we, I will go ahead to determine where the shadows are. So looking at the darkest value on the tree, we have the shadows lying around this area here. So they usually lie around closer to the tree trunk. And we have another one with the shadow here. So we can see the sun coming down from the top, which is why we get the shadows at the bottom. And every bunch will have their own shadow areas. So this is a good starting point to sketch the tree and to understand where the shadows and highlights are before we jump into painting. So now that we have this, and I will start painting in this tree based on this shape. So I'll grab two different brushes, one of size 6 and the bigger one with size 10 and then with the bigger brush I will use this to load up my lighter greens and then with the smaller brush I'll use this for the darker greens and I'll show you in a minute how why I need to use these two brushes and on my palette I already have these pre-mixed greens so I'll just mix this in to get a very light wash of our base color. And if you like to know more about mixing greens and playing around to get different hues, I have a video tutorial on that and I'll link it above here. Do check it out. But otherwise, in this video, I wouldn't talk much on how to mix greens, but we'll be focusing more on how to paint the different eight types of trees. So here I have a very light wash of green as my base, and I'll go ahead with the smaller brush to, with the same base color, I will add in a little more pigments to get the, a darker value. So this will be my lightest green and then we have this mid-tone green and then I'll mix in a little bit of darker green and this will be the shadows for the green. So it's good to prepare this before we start because we will be using the wet on wet technique for this. Okay, and then starting off with my bigger brush and this very light wash of green, I'm going to lay out 
the first layer of the tree following the shapes that we have just sketched. So I'll start off with the left area and then just painting out using the tip of my brush with the tiny leaves that I see and then as we go deeper in, I'm pressing down harder with the belly of my brush to create bigger strokes. And then what I'll do is to keep white spaces in between. Here and then let's move on to the next one on top here. And then you see making sure that these areas are wet. Okay, so I have three of the portions here and before we move on, I'm going to my smaller brush and I'm going to load up a bit more pigments and then dropping in our mid-tones. So I'm following the reference picture and dropping them in where it looks darker. And this is why I have my second brush with me. And then going back to the lighter colour, I keep going on to create the basic form of the tree. With having the second brush in hand, it makes it a lot faster and saves us a lot of time on mixing colours and getting the second darker colour for the shadows. And then here, let's keep adding the shadows. And you can see because my first layer is still wet, I'm able to lay down the darker green and get this softer effect. You can see that I've left some white areas. So these areas were where I'll be painting in the branches later. So I'll try to keep them connected as one even though they are separate portions. And then we have the tree trunk coming down here. And then let's move on to our darkest green before it dries out. And you can slowly see that it's forming its own shape, becoming more three-dimensional. And right now, the previous layer has started to dry so I'm just going to wet it back a little bit and I'll like it to be as soft as possible so that it spreads out and has that bleeding effect You can see that this area is darker, much darker than our first layer. Alright, and then now I'll go in straight with my tree trunk. I'm just grabbing a dark brown. And then we have some smaller branches at the end here I'm using the tip of my brush to paint out these fine lines and then these white spaces in between is where I'll paint in the branches
and as the green start to dry it looks a bit lighter so I'll go in and darken them a little bit more before it dries out totally Okay, and then to add final details, I'm going to use the darker green and then paint in a bit of the leaves. Mostly on where the branches are. Alright, so this is how I would normally paint a basic form of a tree starting off with the sketch finding out their different portions and then the shadows and the highlights and then moving on to paint like this using two brushes one for the lighter green and then we have the smaller brush to go in straight for the darker greens so we have our first tree here next we will paint some pine trees and if we look at the form of the pine tree The overall shape is like a cone and then if we look deep into the individual branch it kind of looks like lines like this so and then from this we build up with a similar basic shape of these Y branches and then just repeating until we get a full form of the pine tree so for this let's paint it straight here and for the pine tree I'm going to use a darker green so I'll start from the top we have a very thin leaves coming up the top and then as we go down paint in this tiny fine lines so we have this one coming out and this line here will be the main branch and then I'll have it coming out slightly different angle So again, the reference photo for this, I will attach it in the link below. And if it's your first time painting a pine tree, I recommend following the reference photo and studying how each of these line turns and bends and grows out. Because otherwise it will end up looking with some odd shape. And then as we move down, I'm going to mix in the other greens that I have in my palette to give it some variety so it doesn't look too dull. So as we go downwards, be sure to keep the center line in the middle. And always branching out from this middle line here. There you 
can see that I'm darkening the center area. So we have this here, our pine tree, and then next let's do a cypress tree. Cypress tree looks like a cone shape, tree like this, and then the branches comes like this in this direction. So when we paint our brush stroke will also be similar in this way to create the shape but most important to note that the overall shape looks like a cone so again I'll start off with the lightest color let's go for a different green I'm going to add a little bit of yellow to give it a warm, warmer tone and then let's go in as I was sketched earlier paint in the brush strokes like this and then be sure to leave in some white gaps And then going in with green, feel free to use a second brush that you already have. But for this, I'll just go in and get my darker color green, more pigmented green. And then while the first layer is still wet, I'm going to drop the second layer, more pigmented wash on top. And then we're going to focus in the center of the branch and then let it spread outwards like so so it sort of looks like a v-shaped tree but because it looks too uniform i'm going to break that out a little bit so it doesn't look too artificial I'll make it a little bit more messy and then let's go in with the darkest green I'm just going to drop this a tiny bit in the center with a little bit of V shape like that and let's do a smaller one here I'm going to make this look like it is further away so I'll use a lighter wash with more water Then let's go in with the darker shadow, just a little bit. Ok, 
Okay, and then here this one we have our cypress tree. The next one we'll do is a poplar tree. It looks similar to cypress tree, but it is shaped slightly different. The poplar tree will have a similar shape like this, but the trunk, the leaves end on top here with a more showing more of the trunk. And the difference between the cypress tree and the poplar tree is that for a cypress tree, the leaves are denser and closer to one another, but for the poplar tree, the leaves open up a little bit more with more gaps in between and it's not as dense as this. So again, I'll use with a lighter green with more wash and then let's start out with the top. Since we have eight more trees to paint, I'll maybe make this one a little smaller. And you can see that they are further apart. And making sure that I keep the center of the trunk. And then going in with my other brush, I'll paint in the trunk right now. And again, making sure to leave lots of white gaps in between so it doesn't look like a dense chunk of leaves. And the importance of leaving out white gaps in between is that it will help the tree look more fresh and more airy. And then try to make it as random as possible and break up the uniform shape so it doesn't look too artificial, make it look more natural. Oh yes, and before I get forget, I'm going to add in the second layer, give it a little bit of dimension. So the key is to drop, in, drop it in areas where it's still wet. Here let's do another of my favourite tree which is the elm tree and elm tree has very distinguished separate bunches of these ones and what we have is a smaller bunch on top and then we have bigger bunch as it moves downwards and then we have this largest one here and then the branches are pretty visible like this. So for this one, I will go for a cooler green, mixing in a bit of turquoise. So I'm going to start with the bunch on top. So you have a puddle going on, just dab your brush dry and then remove the excess water. And then here I have my second bunch right next to it. And then let's go in with the darker shade. So this one I'm placing it at the bottom. And 
since this is bigger, I'm going to extend the shadows out a little more. And then we have another one at the side. And let's finish off with a big bottom bunch. So when just painting these leaves, it will first look a little funny but rest assured once we paint in the branches, it will make a lot of sense and the shape will start to form. Okay, right now let's go in and paint the branches. So we start with thinner lines on top. And then when we paint the branches, be sure that they are connected. They are all connected to one another. And then this one all will connect to the main branch here. Right now the shape looks a little odd, I'll probably add another branch here to balance it out. Here we have the elm tree. And then next, let's do some coconut trees and palm trees. And the basic form of the leaves. So it always starts out with the main branch. And these are the individual leaves. So take note that it looks like a V-shape like this but as we go down the branch the end of the branch the V shapes get smaller and closes in so this is the basic form of the leaves because I get a lot of students painting with the V shape equally open but what we want is to have it open at the beginning and then as we reach the end the V closes in and forms a straight line like that and then when we do our brush strokes we will start with the branch end and then bring it outwards like so so feel free to practice with pencil before painting with the brush to get a feel of the motion of the leaves and then this is our tree trunk and then we we'll have the leaves they all come in different shapes some going upwards and then we have some falling down like so and the leaves would fall down like this and then closing in on the v-shape then we have this one coming out like that and a few more so sometimes you get leaves that bend down like so because it's too heavy and then the stronger ones will stay in a curved shape like that and then we have the coconuts in the center all right and then for this coconut tree I found a very good reference and I'll also link it below so 
feel free to download and follow uh, to study the shapes of the tree. So I'll start off with the top. So we have this line coming down and then it will go upwards. So if it's easier for you, feel free to rotate the paper around. And then from in, push it outwards. And then I'd like to change the hue a little bit by adding a bit more yellow. Like so. Let's do another one. So it's really helpful if you have a brush that has a sharp tip to create these fine lines. And then we have a small one over here. You can see that by changing the hues of my green, I get different variety and a more interesting effect to the over all three. And you can see that I'm moving my wrist here to create this motion. So we start with the main line and then branch it outwards. And I'll probably darken the center a little more with a darker green. Coconut trees are one of my favorite trees to paint because we have them a lot here in Malaysia. And we are a tropical country and we get these greenery trees all year round. And coconut trees bring beach vibes, summer vibes into the painting. So I really love painting them. Okay, and then we have the overall top part of the tree and then I'm going to extend it down with yellow ochre and then taking burnt sienna paint in the shadows on one side then let's do in the lines and we have some coconuts And then let's do a palm tree next to this. And palm tree has a slightly different shape compared to coconut tree. Instead, coconut trees are always found to have this curved, slanted structure. But for palm trees, they are usually straight and tall. And then they have this similar branch. But instead of starting from the end, it starts from further down here. That's where the leaves comes off. And then sometimes you get shapes that look more like a fan, like this here, like a fan shaped like a fan this way. And then we have some on the up. And then it opens up like a fan, like so. So again, feel free to practice this with pencil before we start painting. And then the trunks are usually thicker and more firm to keep it up straight in this posture. And for this, I'll use a darker green. So I'll start off with the top fan shape like. So you can see that I'm doing like an almost zigzag. Let's do another one facing downwards. So this one I'm following a reference photo. 
starting straight from the leaf again it's really helpful to paint the shapes according to a good reference photo and here I've added a little bit of yellow ochre into my mixture to give it a bit of the variety and then we have another one coming out this way to the front you can see that it's very different as compared to a coconut tree the palm tree and for our last tree let's paint in an oak tree and for for an oak tree it is usually more rounded like a mushroom and then you can try to separate it into a different bunch this and then we have some shadows around here but most importantly is to keep it its mushroom shape like and that's the main characteristic of an oak tree and for this I'll use my size 8 brush a slightly bigger brush And again, I'm going in with a darker color with the second brush. You can see I've left a bit of white space in between, but not too much. And then we have this mushroom shaped forming and then the darker shadows will be all at the bottom here darkening a few areas where that's still wet and I can darken it a little more and there we have our oak tree and so this is all the eight types of trees that we have painted and from here we can see that different trees have different shapes and sizes of their own so I think it's a good idea to pre-sketch them in a piece of paper before we actually paint them out because that would help a lot in understanding the basic forms and understanding where the shadows and highlights of each tree lands because each one of them are different and unique on its own. And I think if framed up, it would look lovely in your kitchen or even in your living room. So it will be a fun project to try out. I hope you enjoyed today's video. Do support and give it a like. Otherwise, do comment below and let me know what are your favorite trees to paint. And I will see you in the next one.